Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the TBS Source One version 0.2 5-inch frame. In this video I'm going to assemble it and go over its features and compare it with the previous version which I featured in a build video, the version 0.11. If you never heard about the TBS Source One, it's an open source frame, it is hosted on GitHub and everybody can contribute to it, so this frame keeps evolving and getting better and better. It was initiated by Team Blackship and one of its creators is Philip Seidel, which is a true asset to the community. He also operates a very informative blog and I'm going to put a link to it in the description box down below and you should definitely check it out. In addition, this frame is priced at $27, which makes it probably one of the cheapest non-clone quadcopter frames in the market. You can also get it with three types of arms, so you can use it with 5 inch, 6 inch or 7 inch propellers depending on the version that you got. Inside the bag we can find 8 standoffs, all the needed screws, 2 button plates with a thickness of 3mm, 2 side plates with a thickness of 2mm which is the same thickness of the top plate, and since this is the 5 inch version we can find 5 inch arms, the thickness is about 4mm which is the same thickness of the 6 inch arms and the thickness of the 7 inch arms is 6mm. When assembling the frame you have two options, you can either place this bottom plate on the bottom like I did over here and then you're gonna get more space in the middle, or just like in the diagram you can put it over here and then the arms are going to be inside the frame which is going to be maybe more durable but then you're going to have less space for the stack in the middle. So depending on the components that you're going to use you can decide which way is better for you. Just note that over here I didn't place this button plate in the correct way, you have to make sure that these parts are facing the outwards parts and not the inside, because then the button plate is going to be better secured, so if you decide to go with this way, make sure that your button plate looks like that, and if you're going to put it on top, it should be placed in this manner. Here you can see how the frame looks like when it's assembled, I think that it took me less than 5 minutes to assemble it so it's extremely easy, I recommend on the center plates use some Loctite because it's going to make sure this is going to be well secured, and you can see that I chose to use the center plate over here, unlike the version 0.11 where I use it on the bottom, so I can show you the height difference. If you're going to use it like that, the total height for a stake is going to be about 21 millimeters, and if you're going to place the center plate on the bottom, like the version 0.11, it's going to be around 28 millimeters. In terms of dimensions, the wheelbase of the 5 inch version is 226 millimeters, the wheelbase of the 6 inch version is 263 millimeters, and the wheelbase of the 7 inch version is 300 millimeters. The distance between the front two motors and also between the back ones is about 18 centimeters and the distance between the front motors and the back ones is about 14 centimeters. The weight of the frame is 123.9 grams, so this is definitely not a light frame and it is more intended for freestyle than racing of course. If we compare it to the 0.11 you can see that this frame is a little bit lighter and the reason for that is that the 0.2 version features better protection for the motors which adds some weight. In addition to the added motor protection, now we can find in the center a 20x20 20 20 mounting option and also on the back of the frame we can find a 20x20 20 20 mounting option for a VTX. The side plates have been redesigned, so you can see this is the new design for mounting an FPV camera and this is the older one, so now it can fit more cameras and the supported FPV camera is a full size one and of course you can use micro or mini FPV cameras by using some adapters. The top plate has been redesigned as well, and now the battery straps are much wider. I had some issues actually when using batteries on top on the 0.11 version, and I end up using the battery on the bottom, and hopefully with this one it's going to be easier to mount the battery on top, and I think that this is a very important feature, since mounting the battery on top is a better choice, especially for beginners, because when landing the quadcopter you're going to land on the bottom, and if the battery is going to be placed on the bottom on the bed crash, you might damage it. We can also find on the back these holes for mounting the VTX antenna, you can see that they weren't present on the 0.11, and on the center plates you can also find these holes that will enable you to secure the battery leads. In terms of durability, I can tell you that I did crash the 0.11 version a few times and nothing bad really happened, and in case of a bad crash probably you're going to break the arm, and replacing it is very easy, the arms are interchangeable so you're not going to need to change the entire frame and two arms cost only around $8 so they're pretty cheap as well. 
So overall, I can tell you that I really like the changes that have been made on the 0.2 version. And if you're in the market for a new freestyle frame, I think that you should definitely check it out. It was designed by the community, for the community, and by purchasing a frame, you are supporting this project, which I think is a great cause. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this frame or you have any suggestions for improving it, feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.